Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode on the West Coast by Bullet Bill. So we're going to be uh, changing a few things around today. Basically we're going to be swapping one of the tractors for a new one and we're also going to be changing another tractor possibly in the next episode. Um, if not it'll be the episode afterwards but I should think it will be tomorrow. We're going to just see how we go with the money but I think we're going to be okay since the machines which we're actually going to be buying despite them being new are cheaper than the machines we have. So it's actually quite good luck that this is happening this way. Um, so this is the silage pit which is currently fermenting, it's 13%. We were compacting this at the end of the previous episode which was about 1 in the morning. We really did have a late night. We're back up at 7am as well. Up and ready to go. So uh, yeah, what we're going to do is just leave the John Deere here for the time being because what we're actually going to take away from the farm today is the new Holland T6. Um, yeah, it's down here. Uh, <laughs> just going the wrong way there. We're going to um, be replacing it with a tractor which can have a front loader attacher, but I'm not too sure if we're actually going to fit one to it. Certainly not today, I wouldn't have thought, but maybe in a future episode. Obviously, we are skilled enough to be able to fit one ourselves. We can fit the brackets and then, of course, just fit a front loader to it. Um, but it just really is, I don't know, it's only £800 to fit the front loader to it, but. It's just, do we need it? No point having two tractors with front loader attaches. So I'm going to go this way, since I believe it is fastest to get to the store from this direction. Uh, but it's probably very similar both ways. Now it may not be much of a surprise for you, since it's pretty obvious uh, what machine we're about to buy, since it's in the thumbnail. Uh, but if you didn't see the thumbnail for whatever reason, which is unlikely but possible, it's going to be a Kubota. Now Kubota is something which you don't really see in Farming Simulator, which is weird, I'm not really sure the reasons behind it, but as far as I'm aware, I may be wrong in saying this, but as far as I'm aware there is only one available in FS17. I think it might have been in FS15, I'm not too sure, but certainly the one we're getting today is from a reliable source, it is from the official uh, download site, so if you're going to download it, please make sure you do stick with the download link below. It is Wood Meadow Farms. They do create some uh, some very interesting mods. Wood Meadow Farm modding, I should probably call them. Um, so yes, we're going to be selling this first of all. Oh, and of course we'll get some money for the front loader too. Now, some of you may think it's a bit of a shame that we're getting rid of the New Holland, but we don't necessarily require it, and it is nice to try out some mods as well. Look at that, £107,742. Can't moan at that, considering the Kubota is 50,000. And that isn't modified by me, that is just how it is. 120 horsepower. Um, I think it might be smaller than the T6, but we do have the John Deere anyway for horsepower, so we should be fine. Yeah, it is marginally smaller, unless we had the 160. I'm not sure what we had, but yeah, either way, it isn't that different. That much different, it's just, you know, 20, 30 horsepower different. Let's buy it. I am desperate to see it. So I'm not too familiar with Kubota tractors, but this is the MT35GX, and yeah, it's hopefully going to be a nice addition to the farm. So you can see all the controls are here. I'm not sure, but I think it might have been converted from FS15. Officially, of course. We have beacons. Yeah, it's going to fit in well. I think it is mainly going to be a yard tractor, so we may well fit the front loader bracket to it later. But look at that. We now have £71,000. I think we had about 9000 before. We're doing well. Now, we were going to be buying some stuff, some other stuff. So, we better just buy something now. What we were going to buy was a baler with a wrapper all in one. Uh, I'm not too sure if we are going to stick with that idea, since it is very expensive, but I would like to. The windrow needs to be sold. I will just sell it from here, actually. I shouldn't do, but it's just quite a long way from here. Uh, the story behind the sprayers is, basically, we do have the Valtra tractor, which is currently with row crop tyres. Um, I think for the next year in this Let's Play, we're going to be buying a self-propelled sprayer. That's obviously if funds will allow, which means we can then eliminate a tractor with row crop tyres, which will be very good because I don't want to keep swapping them over. It's a bit of a faff. But yep, yeah, that's the situation with that. We've got a very good combine harvest, so that won't be changed. And the Valtra is actually worth more than the New Holland was, so 
Yes, if we bring it back to the farm, to the store, we'll get loads of money. Anyway, yes, we must buy the... Which one was it? I think it was just this baler, if we can afford it. I'm not sure. Uh, ah, 135. That's a shame. But it is still cheaper than buying this one with this wrapper. Now, I don't think any smaller farmer in real life would be expected to go and buy a piece of expensive machinery outright. They'd pay it off over a number of months or years. So we can definitely take out a loan, providing we pay it back, which is always the tricky part and something I tend to overlook. I'm not too sure where the ATM is machine, <laughs> where the ATM machine is, I should say. Um, it can't be far from here. Uh, but we do actually have one, so if I've just gone to this page here, we can indeed borrow money. Looks like we start off with a £75,000 £75, loan. I wish it was £75. Um, but we'll ignore that. We'll act as if that's zero. And we'll borrow as much as we, we require. Uh, when we do sell the voucher, which like I say is going to be tomorrow... Um, we'll have some excess money there as well. We really were low, weren't we? Right, well that should be enough for now. Um, oh yeah, this is interesting. Which foil colour shall we use? White, black, pink or like a green colour? You know what, I don't think I've ever used the greeny colour, so I'm going to do that today. I think it will be quite a change for us. I think it's the uh, pink is for cancer awareness or something like that, breast cancer awareness. So, um, yeah, we could do that for like a, maybe a charity video or something. I've mentioned it before, but the problem is with charity videos is they work best as live streams, and I can't really live stream. So, I don't know. Yet to decide. Obviously, this tractor will not be powering the baler. It isn't powerful enough, but hopefully it can tow it. Yeah, no problem. Out of interest, what horsepower does this baler require? 140 horsepower. Okay, so yeah, it's a round baler, so it doesn't really matter that it's a round baler. It's just we did uh, sell one and sell the wrapper for it, but I do prefer the all-in-one. It is easier. So today... I think what we should do, since there is nothing else really we can do except for spraying, is go over to probably, well, field 81 again, I suppose, and I would like to create some silage bells. I think it would go down very well. Um, the reason why I say this is silage bells are worth a lot of money. And I also know that many people like to watch me do silaging. Obviously, it's not with the forage harvest or anything like that, but it's still good. Now I think the colour for silage bells is usually black, the wrap is black, um, but obviously we've gone with the green today just to keep it a bit different. I believe that would usually be used for haylage, so obviously haylage is different to silage, but obviously for the purpose of this video it doesn't really matter. Can you change the colour after purchasing the baler? That is something I would like to find out, because I would prefer to keep swapping between the colours for the different types of bales. Obviously, we're going to have to discover this later on. Now, I think th the speed that we can climb this hill at is going to be quite a good indication as to how powerful this tractor is going to be. Because although some tractors are actually noted down as low horsepower, obviously I'm referring to farming simulator only here, they can actually be very powerful. And that is pulling us up there pretty well. So we may be able to use this tractor as the, uh, the one powering the baler, but... Yeah, obviously it's a little bit small. It has done that very well. It does pack a punch, this Kavosa. Good to see that it's got plenty of power. Actually, we could just try it out without even bailing. You can just turn it all on and just see how it goes. We may actually not be here. Um, we do have another field. This one isn't fully grown. So we may go over to... Um, What's it called? <laughs> oh no, the names. Oh, that is so annoying. Uh, Hill Ridge Farm, yes. So I was going to actually attach the PTO shaft, but I don't think the tractor is compatible with the manual attach. 
It does the click sound, but no PTO shaft attaches. It could also be, of course, that the battery is just way too small, which is probably the reason behind it. Um, but yes, I think the best thing to do now is to go over to the field, which we actually do need to cut, and then we can put this onto the John Deere. How have I put that frames per second thing up? Ah, F2. That's interesting. Yeah, so I'll see you down at the other farm. Ah. Great demand for canola. Do we have any? We do, but not much at all. We'll keep hold of it. I don't think it'll be worth getting rid of it. Look at that, when you accelerate, you, you sort of get moved back in your seat. The G-force of the Kubota. That's a nice little feature. Right, while we're here, I'm just going to check on these sheep. I was going to go and do the bailing, but no, we must check first. Uh, actually, they are pretty good. Well done, sheep. You're very low maintenance and you're very good. Ah, rush hour. We always seem to hit rush hour. But this is the way up to Hillridge Farm and the field we're going to is actually just the other side of the yard so you might be able to see it from here. Yes, just over there. Now I think it is fully grown, just a case of cutting it, rowing it up and then bailing it. It should be very simple. In fact it should be very fast money. Which is what we all like to hear. This thing moves you in your seat. Right, okay. So, obviously, this tractor is not going to be powering the baler. We thought it was strange anyway that it would be on the baler. Um, it was just me being silly as usual. Um, what it's actually going to be running is the windrower. So, if I just park it over here somewhere. And then we're going to race up to the farm we started off in. So we can retrieve a windrower and the mowers. We may be able to row up at the same time as cutting. I am not entirely sure at this stage. It all comes down to the working width of the windrower. But there is the field. Not super big, but we should be able to get some fairly decent bales out of it. Anything to get the money back from the baler. It won't do, it won't get it all back, but it will be a good help. Anyway, yes, left out of here and up to the farm. Mountain View Farm, you see I can remember that one. Very good, because it's my favourite farm. <laughs> That's why. It's a very fast tractor and also it doesn't really consume much fuel. As you can see, the consumption per hour is very low. But there is nothing on the back, but we're still doing some decent speed. So you would expect it to consume quite a bit of fuel. Uh, yeah, it can feel like a very long way up here. We are climbing the hill. And that is affecting the fuel economy. It is a decent mod though, the uh, realistic fuel mod. I'm, I'm not too sure exactly how it works out the fuel consumption per hour, but it is very clever how it knows that. Um, I think the worst fuel consumption I've seen is about 45 or something litres per hour on a bigger tractor or a harvester. Here we are. Right, so I did put the windrower in this very tight barn over here. But it should be just right for this tractor. A perfect machine for it, a perfect implement for it I should say. Since we don't have a front linkage. This is the kind of job it's going to be best suited to. This and yard work, basically any kind of light work. And the John Deere, as we know, is currently over here. Without the mowers. Here it is. Oh, wow, that was weird. Okay, off we go. Let's get those mowers attached. So we've got the uh, rear mower here and the front mower in there. Can we open this window? Yes we can. Oh, 
I'll put the PTO shaft on now, otherwise I'm bound to forget. But that, oh no, don't do that. That should be good. And now all we need to do is put this front mower back on, but mm, not really left much space. Uh, should be possible, just about. Let's jump out, and we'll get that fitted too. Brilliant. Okay. So, with that all fitted up, or kitted up, as I meant to say, let's go. And with this setup, we should be able to get that field cut in a very small amount of time. Get one of our workers to help us. Oh, <laughs> stuck on the front mower. But what do you think to the Kubota? Obviously, there are no other Kubotas in the game to compare it to. But I think it's very nice. It's obviously totally different to what we've usually used. As mentioned, Kubotas are just not really seen in the game. And I don't really know the reason behind it. I suppose one thing could be Kubotas tend to only make smaller tractors. Obviously, I think they're probably best known for their compact tractors. They do make tractors well, like this, but their biggest isn't that big. Can you imagine a Kubota Challenger? <laughs> that would be quite an interesting thing to see. Can't really imagine it. Back at the yard. Now, I don't know. I really don't know if we're going to be able to do this. I think what I will likely do is have the rower going and the baler going um, and then we'll just cut first of all I think those two would work better as a combination rather than doing the mowing and rowing at the same time oh, I didn't. I should have stopped that earlier we need to reverse back into there that will do okay so we get it all turned off and turn the beacons off and everything jump into our John Deere and we can begin should be very fast uh, once unfolded it begins the silage bell creation Oh yeah, beacons, they don't really need to be on. Bit of cab view wouldn't go amiss either. I know a lot of people prefer it when I'm in cab view. We can't go right up to the edge because of all the weeds and nettles and stuff. They don't really cut, so we've got to stay a certain distance into the field. Um, but yeah, we need to be uh, obviously taking as much as possible without taking the rubbish. Yep, that's all okay. And I can't really see the need in mowing the centre of the track. Seems a bit ridiculous, so we'll just leave that as it is. It's not a very big field, so going up and down is going to be a fairly tricky thing to achieve. We may just keep going around the headlands until we get to the centre. I think we did that last time. It seemed to work quite well.
that is the field cut. All seems to have gone pretty well. I'm just going to shut this back window now. We don't need to keep it open. Um, and we're going to now row it up, of course. But uh, I don't know. I still don't know if we should have Follow Me going. Because I know that Follow Me is a very good mod. But when it comes to a tighter field, if you don't keep an eye on it, it can go a little bit crazy. And you can have quite a few bits missed. Which I don't really want to have. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I might just do it myself, it might be easier. So, uh, yeah, we'll row it up first. And then we can uh, bail it. It's all about keeping it neat, I suppose. Oh yes, does the PTO shaft attach to this? Hopefully it does. Ah, okay. Uh, in that case then, I think what I'm gonna have to do is disable the manual attach just for today. And um, yeah, make sure it can actually power the rake. We will see, because the windrow needs to work. Right, there we go. So at least we can now turn it on and we can rake this field into rows. Windrow, I should probably just call it. Um, so yeah, this is gonna make the bailing process much easier. You actually don't need to windrow if you don't want to, but chances are you're going to miss quite a bit and it takes much longer. Because those mowers do it in such a way that it pretty much does put it into rows anyway. But we're all about doing things efficiently, more than anything. And we seem to have quite a decent amount of grass in the swath, so we should be able to get quite a number of bales. I'm still uh, wanting to use the um, the grass mower, self-propelled mower from the Black Sheep Modding Massey Ferguson pack. It does look very interesting, but as of yet I haven't really been able to integrate it into any of the uh, Let's Plays, so yeah, one day. Because it looks so good. The other disadvantage with having the baler following you is if you're doing the headlands it can actually go and drop all the bales on the headland and then they can be in the way later for when you're rowing up the middle of the field. So that is another disadvantage of it. I'm not saying the follow me is bad, it's a very very good mod and in fact like I said before it is probably one of my favourite mods when it comes to that sort of style of mod, something which adds another feature to the game. Um, but yeah, there's times when it isn't always the best thing to use, mainly for the smaller fields, really. It's probably my most used mod, too. We can almost take four... Yeah, we can. Four in there. Look at that. It's a lot of grass. Well, the swaths are looking quite good. Um, it is actually very healthy, this field, despite us not actually being able to fertilise it. I did have a bit of a problem with it, since it isn't a numbered field. Um, but no, it hasn't really made much of a difference. Uh, now, you really shouldn't uh, keep turning this thing on and off for turning on the headlands. However, if there is a very tall piece of grass, you probably should do, because you could just go and flick it everywhere, if you were to clip it. The lifting is usually fine. But the Kubota, I think we can very safely say, is perfectly capable of this job. And it's numb. Very pleased that we've got it. Even if it isn't as high horsepower as the New Holland. Always nice to try out some different mods. Right, well there we go. That is the field completed. So let's fold this up. I'm going to take it back over to the yard over here. It probably won't be staying over here. We'll, we'll likely take it back to either the sheep farm or mountain view farm. Um, yeah. Maybe in here we should put it. We don't want to block in the sprayer. That's good. Yeah, so, nice tractor. Very nice. What we do need to do, though, is, of course, drop off these mowers. Is it me, or is it that you can only... Yeah, you can only do the uh, animated 
getting in and out of the tractor if you open the door first. I don't think you have to open the door for getting out, but you do for getting in. Well, these can go over here. In one of these barns, we do have plenty of space. Yep, that will do nicely. Just wondering about the height. Oh yeah, we turned it off, didn't we? That's a shame. I'll have to turn it on again, the manual attach. And, um, yeah, you'd usually obviously lower this down, but there might not be space for it. So I'm simply going to drop it, which I... Oh, you do actually have to. Oh, great. Okay, we're going to lower it down. Fair enough. better for the mower anyway. We don't want to be dropping it from a great height. Right, let's get this baler. Now this is going to be interesting. First time I have properly created the green wrap bales. We'll have to just refresh my memory as to how we do the wrapper on the back. I think you just press Y and then you press Y again to drop it. But yeah, it will soon become clear. I do have the uh, auto unload on actually, so that should sort out the unloading of the baler. But it won't affect the dropping of the bales off the back once they've been wrapped. So that'll have to be something I do. First bale already. That is good. good thing as well because I was about to miss something there. There it is. Nice green wrap. It's a very pale green. Oh, so satisfying watching that wrap cut. Uh, right, so how do we drop it off? Uh, why? Right, okay, that's good. Oh, yep. Yeah. Got to get used to the round balers again. Really don't want to be leaving anything on the ground. We need to get everything we can do. What I'm going to be aiming to do is to drop every bale where it's not going to roll away. So that's a good place. There's the next bale. Well, we're doing very well so far. Oh, that one did roll. But, thankfully, this map has got the hedges where you can actually drive through them, but the bales can't go through them. So every bale will stay certainly within the vicinity of the field, even if it isn't in the field itself. This is a nice level bit. So is that four or five bells just from doing the first headland? Four, I think. Or three. Still good though. Technically four, because we've got one on the back now. Seems I did miss some. Get that picked up straight away. Now, the one thing which I am obviously going to have to be uh, sorting out next time is the picking up of these bales. And obviously, with it being a wrapped bale, you shouldn't be piercing it if you're not going to use it straight away. For example, if we're going to sell it. So, uh, it depends how realistic you want me to do it. I could just simply put a spike through them and sell them. Or, we could obviously buy the, the grab, the wrapped bale grab, and do it that way. It all depends on the level of realism. This is supposed to be the realistic series, so yeah, we should do it with the wrapped bale grab. Away a bit, but it shouldn't go too far. 
Yeah, stay put. Well, we are doing well. While that is doing that, I'll open up the statistic menu so we can see. Seven so far. Gotta say, that is impressive. Now we're doing the centre of the field, and it's still going very well, still getting loads out of it. This one might be slightly reduced, it's not filling up quite as fast, but nothing to complain about, that is for sure. How many do we have? Ten! Ten bales. Has anybody else seen the self-propelled baler? The real one. It's a, it's a Vermeer, I think it is. Um, which I, I believe is a prototype, but they've released a video of it. Very interesting thing. I suppose it's actually um, designed similar to a swather. Um, with well, kind of like a, a backward swather. In a way, you have to go and watch the video, but yeah, it's an interesting thing. But obviously, it doesn't mow grass, it bales. Hopefully, we can squeeze out this final bale before the end. Very, very close. There we go. And then, yeah, there's a few bits missed, but we can't really do anything with them, so we might as well just leave them as they are. So, how much have we finished off with here? 13? Or is that because I haven't dropped it off yet? Let me just see. Uh, yes, 13 bales. Well, that is nothing to cry about. That is very good. Uh, what we do need to do is turn the baler off. Anyway, I think that is everything for today. Hopefully you've enjoyed the episode. Also, a big thank you to Wood Meadow Farm Modding for the Kubota. Um, and in fact, any mods which I use from those, they are very good. And uh, yeah, the thing we don't like about them actually is that they do different stuff. Like there's loads and loads of Fent mods and New Holland mods and all that kind of stuff, but no Kubotas, they also do loads of, in fact they do loads of stuff. Trucks, um, there is uh, some very good recovery trucks. Dumpers, excavators, the Kubota obviously. Just check out our website and you'll find out some very decent stuff there. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you again in the next episode. Until then though, bye for now.